She can. We'll try it one more time. She can. Thank you. A lot of people have called me in the last three weeks to understand how I started as asset manager for Bonga. And I said, if you want to hear it, come here. She can. And let us tell you how we can do more. This is a picture of Bonga, my pride. Bonga belongs to the Nigerian government. Snapco, which is Shell Nigeria Exploration and Production Company, is operating it on behalf of NNPC, and we have them here today. So please, let's clap for them. Bonga produces about 200,000 barrels of oil. You know in Nigeria, our revenue comes from oil and gas. Bonga produces that much. People have asked me, do people actually live there? Yes, people actually live there. We are producing oil and gas from a depth of 1,000 meters, the first in Nigeria when we started. People have asked me, do we have women staying there? As we sit here, I've seen a couple of the women that work there. They live there. They work there. Some of them work 14 days and come out 14 days. Some of them work 28 days and come out 20 days. Are they married? Yes, they are married. Do they have children? Yes, they have children. And they have support that is seeing them through. They asked me to talk about how I got to where I am today. And for me to do that, I'll focus on three themes, basically. The first one is influencing to grow. The second is turning challenges into opportunities. And the third is on be curious. As I talk about my life journey, you would see all these three, three things play out. I come from an all girls family. We are six, six girls. And in those days, you know what it means to have only girls. But one thing my parents taught us, they taught us clearly that we should not allow our sex limit us. They taught us how to speak up. As a growing child, I could tell my father, sorry, I don't agree with what you're doing. I could tell him what I wanted, but that was my father training me to be who I am today. And then I got through primary school, and I was to go to secondary school. Then it was Catholic schools reigning. But by then, Nigerian government had taken Catholic schools out from the Catholic church. So federal schools started to reign. And for me to go to a federal school, it meant I had to work very hard. I would leave the house at 7.30 in the morning, finish school at 1 o'clock, and then from that school, I would go to lessons upon lesson upon lesson. I never got back home before 8 o'clock. And when I got back home, my mom, she was a teacher. As you are getting back home, you are sitting down on that table to finish your homework. So for me, back then, I thought it was stress. But guess what? It was teaching me what hard work meant. And that hard work actually pays. So I got into secondary school, finished GSS 1 to 3, and it was time to do GSS SS 1. That's when you make your decision as to what subjects you want to, to, to carry on with. I decided I didn't want to be a social science person. I wanted to be a full science person. And it meant buying the core books. So my dad, who I'm very fond of, I would always do everything with my dad. My dad decided that he was going to go with me to the market to buy my books. And he came with his friend. We got to the first bookshop. We got the list of books, Ababio and Co. back then, expensive. The man looked at it, the total cost. As we left to go to another shop just to cross-check the price, 
The man called my dad, Matthew, come. Why are you wasting time for this girl? Uh, this girl that our education will end in the kitchen. That was the first time I heard such a derogative statement about a girl. I felt bad. I put my head down because I wasn't quite clear how to react to that. But my dad laughed and said, you see my six girls, none of them will end up, they, will, will their edu education end in a man's kitchen. They will become what they choose to become. <laughs> and we got my books, I got back to school. As I got into school, we had to decide what so class to go into. I had very, two very good friends, and they're still my friends to, to, till today. I have one of them here with me. She said to me, Eloho, let us go to 1A, SS1A. And I said, ah, ah, how can the two of us, can we cope? Because we were in the dullest class from JS1 to 3. So we said, I said, can we cope? She said, why not? I said, she, I said I'm going to. I said to myself, if she can do it, I can do it. What friends do you have with you? How are they influencing you to grow? And that's how I got into that class. And we both did excellently well in that class. It was time to decide what career to move on with. I had an uncle back then, an accountant. He was cool, very cool looking. And I decided maybe I'll be an accountant. But then I was in a pure science class. It didn't make sense. You waste all that brain doing physics, chemistry, further math for nothing. So I decided, okay, I'll do something else. Everybody else or most people in the class wanted to be doctors. I knew that was not my thing. But guess what? In my life, I had a role model all my life, my father, a mechanical engineer. So I said, well, everybody calls me a daddy's girl. I don't want to be a daddy's girl anymore. I want to be myself. So I decided to read chemical engineering. So I called my dad. I'm changing my subjects, and I'm changing my career. I want to be a chemical engineer. I still have that letter to date, my dad's response. My dad said, I have noted your change in subject, and you have my blessing to do whatever you want. I finished school. Before I finished school, it was clear in my head what I needed to make to get into university. I knew clearly what I was going for. English was not my strength. My writing was rubbish. By the time we finished work, even in the, I remember clearly in the English exam, my teacher came and looked at my script and said, ha, eloho, you've got 20 minutes to go, go and pray because it was foul scratch writing. <laughs> I said, well, mommy, but fear would not let me tell her it's my writing back then because she warned me and I wouldn't listen. So I kept quiet. I said, well, mommy, engineering takes English in Uniben. She said, okay, time to go into Uniben. We did jam, time to go in. Guess what? Engineering changed from P in English to C. Meaning, no university for me. I had to go back to the drawing board to do work again. And then I said to myself, why waste? Let me go into a polytechnic. I wrote polytechnic exam too, and I was top on the list. But I had an aunt who I called my mom today. She decided that, Eloho, you are not going to no polytechnic. She believed in me. And she said, I will do whatever it takes to get you into Uniben. And she did. Life will throw lemons at you. You need to decide what you want to make out of it. I chose to make lemonade out of life. So I got into Uniben to study physics education, year one. Year one, we all had exactly the same subject, apart from the two other educational subjects I had to do, which was good. I finished year one. Change year two, no, another challenge in life. I said, okay, 
Back then, my elder sister had called me, what were your grades? I told her, she said, look at you, you want to finish your life. You end up with a third class. It was a wake-up call for me. I knew I had to sit up. So, eventually I got to change to engineering, but I lost one year. But it wasn't the end of life. I knew what my goal was. I wanted to become a chemical engineer. So you have to be clear on what your goals are. And then I got into university. University wasn't any easy. The boys in the class would criticize us, but we chose not to be intimidated. There are always very few girls in engineering, but if you stand your ground, you will make it to the end. We worked hard. I changed my strategy. I started working with the best of, working with the, best of the best. The, girl, the, the best person in my class was a girl. She made a first class. I made her my friend. I started working with her. And we both graduated. She made the first class. I made it 2-1. Time to go looking for job. Before then, final year, we went for Nigerian Federation of Catholic Students sent forth. Two, year, two weeks to my final exam. I was going back home. I had a bike accident. My whole face gone. My jawbone broken. I was on the sick bed. I decided that I would write my exams from sick bed. And I wrote exams. Luckily, I went there, I was a bit better, and I wrote my exams. I graduated. Time to choose your job. My parents lived in Port Harcourt, very close to Shell office. My mother would pray day and night, oh God, allow one of my children work in Shell. I said, okay, you can be praying. Me, I'll go and do my own research. I can't work for a company where I can't make decisions, where my talent cannot be useful. So by the time I did my research, I found out Shell it is. I started looking for how to get into Shell. One day my uncle saw a newspaper, the, the training school, brought it to me. I did everything, wrote exam, got in, did an interview and got into Shell. And that's how my career started in the oil and gas in the industry. I got into production. The first thing they said to me, Oti Baje, and I'm like, what does that mean? They said, once you go into production, your life is finished. It's only old men that you find there. But I decided for me, my story will be different. I had to work hard. I did everything everybody could do. We had men with us. I remember my supervisor then said to me, he was giving tasks to people to do, and he wanted them to work on a Saturday. He didn't give to me. I said, why? He said, you're a woman, go and help your mother in the kitchen. I said, okay, no problem. He went off duty. His back-to-back -back came. I went to that one. They gave everybody. They didn't give me. I want a stretch. Give me something to do. And that's how my stretch assignment started with Shell. I went from one assignment to another. I was working in the field. I'll go to the field and come back. I had a very strong support at home. My number one sponsor was my husband. I remember coming back from the field one day and I saw him angry. I'm like, what is the problem? He said, I never want to see that man there. And then, what was the problem? The dry cleaner told him, your wife, stop her from going to work. But he refused. But I started up with various mentors, various sponsors, and today I get a lot of stretch assignment. Some of them I ask for, some of them, with God, anything is possible. The door opens for you. I'm able to operate what you see today, not because I am who I am, but because I had people who they were ready to take. They were ready to spend time on me. They sponsored me. Who are you sponsoring? Who is that woman you are lifting up today? And beneath it, you've got to hold on to God. God is the author and finisher of our faith. And my own case has not been different. I'm grateful to NNPC. I'm grateful to Shell. But most important, my family and God, key for me. Thank you. My time is over.